This is the ever boastful Russian Ministry of Defense, recently showing off urban warfare training underway in Belarus. A warning to all, really, that Belarus could soon get very involved in the war next door. Frightening, only that's been the threat for almost a year and is yet to happen. Why not? Well, here's a clue. Shredded Belarusian rail lines, the very lines used by Russians for tanks and troops. Not an accident, sabotage, and not a one-off event. They hacked the Belarusian railways and turned off the optimization system. Uh, they brought down a lot of viruses to the networking systems uh, when uh, Russian troops were trying to attack Kiev and Kiev area. Yuliana Shmetovets is the spokesperson for Cyber Partisans. That's a group of self-taught Belarusian hackers so secretive even she doesn't know their identities. Working with other saboteurs, some have managed to snarl the operations of their own country's authoritarian leader, Alexander Lukashenko, Putin's ally, who after nearly 30 years in office, happily calls himself Europe's last dictator. The saboteurs want both of them stopped. If he's, um, God forbid, successful in Ukraine, the next steps, as they announced before, could be Poland, could be Lithuania, could be Latvia, and the way to do it is through Belarus. They claim to have successfully hacked the passports of every citizen in Belarus, made an NFT of Lukashenko's passport to sell and fundraise off of. Some saboteurs use drones to attack Belarusian police stations, but dictators don't tolerate dissent. Videos from the Belarusian Interior Ministry show harsh takedowns of suspects, some reportedly even shot in the knees. Punishments Shmatovets thinks about even from her home in New York. I can face capital punishment as several partisans were marked as a terrorist group. This work is hard, trying to both protect Ukraine and untangle themselves from a dictator's web. Ustala. Consider Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, a teacher who ran for president after her husband was arrested and she won, or seemed to. Lukashenko, the dictator, wasn't having it. Claimed victory sent riot police into the streets. Tikhonovskaya was so threatened she fled in the middle of the night. We are getting reports that the main opposition candidate might be missing. The whole world left wondering what happened to her. When the Belarus was dragged into this war... When she now lives and fights in exile. Made her way late last year to the Halifax Security Forum. So we met up to talk of her country's precarious place and her decision to flee. That decision you made must have been one of the hardest decisions of your life. When you are put, a woman put in front of the choice, you know, safety of children, and stay in the country, you know, of course, at that moment, my internal mother win. Have you come to a place where you are, you've made peace with making that decision? No, I still uh, wondering if I could do differently. Everything was so chaotic. I reject Lukashenko's fraudulent and deadly regime. And the second guessing may stalk her, but it's also freed her to get loud and travel. Coming to Canada was key. She lobbied for and succeeded in getting sanctions. It's a clear political message uh, to Belarusians that they are not alone in this fight. I wonder what it, what it feels like now that so much attention is on Ukraine. I don't want to compete for attention because uh, we are fully support uh, uh, all this attention on Ukraine. Because they are defending uh, democratic values we are fighting for as well. But of course, uh, I want the world not to overlook the responsibility of Lukashenko for dragging our country into this war. This is a bit of an internal struggle. How to fight for Ukraine, of course, but still save some passion and resources for protecting the people of Belarus. In Toronto, the leader of the Belarusian-Canadian alliance, Alena Leonvanchanka, feels it deeply. It's kind of hard to find a line. Uh, are, am I egoistic and pushing my agenda too much when such crimes and terrors are happening in Ukraine? For this group, fighting doesn't look like cyber hacking or sabotage. As much as they know and applaud those efforts, their battle is strictly telling people that their country is under the thumb of Russia and wants out. 
We cannot go to Belarus. Basically, most of us are banned and would be arrested or our families would be in uh, danger. So what we can do, we can make it public. Belarusians and migrants are now hostages of the regime. And the woman who would be president, determined to keep pressing Western governments to remember what happens in Ukraine, won't stop in Ukraine. Suspend the so uh, are you ready you know, to defend Belarusians um, after Ukraine will win? Of course, we are not asking you to, you to do our work, our job, but we need assistance, we need energy, we need understanding that we are not forgotten, we are not abandoned. And to try to ensure Vladimir Putin doesn't further use or abuse their Belarus.